before we get into the video, down link down below is a card, the Black Lives Matter card. It will lead you to various places to donate uh, and lead you to various ways to help out. This is not something we can stop talking about. We have to keep talking about it. Share whatever resources you can. Boost and uplift black voices. And don't stop. Hello, welcome back to Stardust the Reads. I'm Chris, and today I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for One by One by Ruth Ware. This is the literally dead book club pick for September. No, October. It's October. <laughs> It follows a group of co-workers and one former employee as they vacation in a chalet where a snowstorm leaves them stranded. It is inspired or it is a retelling of and then there were none by Agatha Christie which I have not read and do not have any interest in reading. I've read one Ruth Ware in the past, and that is The Turn of the Key. That is a retelling of The Turn of the Screw. I hated that book. I'm not going to lie. I think I gave it two stars. And I wasn't going to pick this one up, but it is the Literally Dead Book Club pick for October, so I'm just going to read it anyway. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. That's just how this goes. I have started this book, actually. I had to fix my bookshelf because it was looking a bit rough, not gonna lie, but I fixed it and I am going to be reading and so I was listening while I fixed it and not sure how I'm feeling right now. I This is going to be a book that is unnecessarily straight. I can tell you that now because it is just, like, there were such loving descriptions of the women in this book, and both of our point of view characters are women, and I know this isn't going to be sapphic, because why would it be sapphic? But I just want everyone to know going in that if it's not sapphic, it's not getting five stars, more likely than not, because I'm feeling baited. <laughs> I am going to go and eat dinner now, but I am going to continue reading and I will let you guys know when I have more concrete thoughts about this book. Okay, so what happened is that the earbuds I used to record, um, like the wireless earbuds that have a mic that I used to record, they, they broke. Um, not sure how, I just know that when I try to use them now, they make this terrible sound. And I don't have the time to deal with that. So, I'm going to get more. Uh, I'll probably get like a more reliable pair from Walmart or just order them off the internet but right now I just need something so I can film today because I today is a filming day I was supposed to be filming right now and not walking to the dollar store so yeah I am gonna try to get those quickly uh one plus side is that this means I can finally get some coffee. I forgot to get a mask. Uh-huh. That's this is my life, guys. I forgot to grab a mask. So I'm gonna do that and then getting new earbuds so that I can actually film. So I'm not sure what percent I'm on when it comes to this book. But I didn't want to give an update because I have a theory. So, my theory... Oh, I got earbuds, by the way. That's good. Um, so, spoilers for this book. Uh, there will probably be a warning at the very beginning of the video. So, I don't need to say this. But, you know, spoilers. So, what I think happened is that the 
there, so there are two point of view characters. Aaron and Liz. I think Liz did it. Now, at the moment, only one of the characters is dead, and that is... No, two characters are dead. Ava was the first guy, and she is, like, the CEO or the co-founder of the of a tech company called Snoop. So it's, like, a music listening thing, like Spotify, but you could see other, but other people are listening, something like that. Um, and then the, like software development dude Elliot died he was poisoned I guess yeah he was poisoned um he was poisoned sorry I'm watching my baby sister while my mom is in Wendy's but he was poisoned and this is when they were thinking it's murder uh Ava died in a skiing accident it's not actually an accident um, they're trying to, like, say it's this dude Indigo that did it, because he was, like, into Ava, they were, like, having a relationship, but I don't think it's actually him, because he has, like, too much time has been spent trying to, no, I don't think it's him, because there's been too much time too early on saying, overtly that he's the killer so my theory is that it is Liz who is one of our point of view characters because one she left the group right before Ava was killed and that's really it that's my only point and well I guess I guess I have another point and that's like there's no suspicion in the narrative being thrown at her so could be her okay so it's been pretty much confirmed that it lives. I'm glad I was right. Um, I am not sure how obvious this plot twist is gonna be to other people. So, like, like I was saying earlier, I, I, you guys saw my reasoning. I was going off of what I know about writing, um, what I know about, like, how narratives are set up, and what I know about narrative utility and stuff like that, so, I don't know how obvious the twist would be to other people. If you guys have read the book already, let me know down below if you thought it was obvious or not. The general fact that I am aware of how this stuff happens, I'm aware of like how books are written, how you need to take into account characters and character utility and stuff like that. I am not sure if this is going to be obvious to other people or not. I mean, I am by no means a seasoned thriller reader, but I am familiar with tropes and plots and how this stuff tends to work because it's generally it's generally just something I have inter interest in. I am really into like theory and analyzing work so it's just kind of how my brain works at this point. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I was enjoying the turn of the key. At this same point, I'm about 75% of the way in. I'm... I am not thinking it's going to be a 5 star, but it's probably going to be a 4 star, which is very nice because I've read very few thrillers that I that I've actually liked. So I am desperately trying to like them now. I do have some concerns about how Liz is being portrayed. She comes from a household where her parents fought a lot when she was growing up and that's um messed her up a bit. And so I'm worried it, this is going to be a 
trauma made this person evil type deal, which is not ideal under any circumstances. I don't tend to like narratives like that. Um, but I'm going to keep reading and see how that happens. I'm probably going to finish the book tonight. Not sure. Might update you guys in the morning. Might update you right as I finish. Not sure. Okay. Lighting might be bad. You can probably see the clothes I have stacked in this chair beside me, but it's fine. We're fine. About half an hour to an hour ago, I finished one by one. It was going so well, guys. It was going so well. I think I'm going to give it three stars. That is an improvement because I did not like the turn of the key whatsoever. It was just a bad book. I didn't like it. And I did enjoy this one. I had a fun time reading it. But I just have some issues that I feel like should be addressed, and I will address them here. My biggest issue is that this book was approaching a point. It almost said something, and I think it was trying to say something, but it didn't say it. So, at the beginning of the book, there is like a heavy, heavy focus on the fact that Liz is lower class. The, our other point of view character is like a service worker, okay? So we have a service worker and we have a woman who is very clearly lower class as our point of view characters. And there's commentary in the beginning that's very heavy about the culture of the elite, uh, about the culture of like tech companies and just how these people, these elite rich people, treat people. And I was liking that a lot, but that tapered off and it's like, fine, okay, whatever. It's fine that it just tapering off did not really bother me because it did, it did narrow from a larger focus on like the society to individual people, which I care less about, but I still didn't hate. And so I was having a good time, I was enjoying it, even if we were just hearing about how these two specific rich people were terrible. But then, at the end, it opens back up to a wider thing and starts, like, trying to speak about society again. And this is, like, half an hour of the audiobook left, like, not my time, but, like, actual time on the audiobook. So there's like half an hour left and they open back up to this wider scope, but there there was not enough time to develop it to a satisfactory degree. And I was like, okay, this is like a really low four star. And then and then the rich jerk gets redeemed and literally all of the commentary about rich people and about tech bros gone it's gone and i just don't care anymore like you were going to make a point and you didn't make it and now i'm bored thank you for boring me another issue i had is that we get mentions of liz's childhood trauma throughout the book it is a plot point. Like, not a plot point. It's a plot device. We are supposed to know she had a bad childhood and that childhood messed her up. And then it doesn't, like, it's just mentioned. It. She just throws in some childhood trauma and doesn't, like, do anything with it. It's not there to build character. It's just there to make us not think Liz is the killer because she had a bad childhood. And I'm like, mmm. You just don't use childhood trauma to make your character seem more sympathetic and keep us from figuring out she's the killer, maybe. Like, it just felt very gross to use it that way. 
I should mention this because I did mention it earlier. I we were baited. I mean, at least I was. I don't know. I was getting lesbian vibes. We didn't get any lesbians, and I'm sad. But also, if there had been lesbians, I would have been like, why was the lesbian the killer? So, it's probably for the best there weren't lesbians, but it would have been even better if their vibes weren't there in the first place, if you if you understand that. Back to, like, my, my thoughts on the rest of the book, like, the stuff that wasn't bad. So, there was a very slow start. It felt like a contemporary for, I would say, the first 25%. I could be wrong on this, like, guesstimation, but it felt very slow, and then it picked up exponentially and kind of just quickly got faster and faster until we got to the climax, in which case it was going so fast, the chapters were, like, three minutes, and that I liked a lot. I liked that slow slow start, and then that really quick rest of the book, it, I think, helped establish the mood a lot, because it just, it put you on edge, and I did really enjoy that. I do think the ending was a bit too slow. There was like an hour, maybe a bit less, of the audiobook that was left after Liz died. It is just, it was boring. It was boring. And I think the book would have been much stronger if it just ended shortly after Liz died or after Aaron was rescued. I think I think that would just would have been a much stronger ending. If it had just ended there, I would be like, oh, this book didn't have a point. That's fine. Like, <laughs> I think having a point and saying it poorly is worse than not having a point. So we have two point of view characters, neither of their voices felt particularly strong, so they were like identifiable because Liz's narration tended to be more timid and shy until the reveal that she was the killer, it's Aaron tended to be more compassionate and authoritative and that was good, but as we reached the end, like as we reached closer and closer to the climax, their voices started to just mush into one, and I didn't like that, especially on the audiobook where there's one narrator. It was a bit confusing at times, even if I was paying a lot of attention to it. I feel like I've been talking about the negatives of this book for way too long. Because I did, I did like the book. I think it was intriguing. I think the plot, I think... The mystery was really well done, I think. The mystery was incredibly well done. The, the pieces worked together, and there was there were enough characters that I think it would be hard to get a read on who was who, so I think that would be like, I think for a lot of people it's going to be a great plot twist. I also think having Aaron as the other point of view was a really good choice, at least <laughs> it's mostly a good choice. Um, so she was a good foil for Liz throughout, and it just served to, I don't know, it served to give you a more complete picture of what was going on, and I enjoyed it a lot. I do think it was a good um, way to obscure Liz's guilt as long as the book managed to. Uh, but it did at times undercut the narrative. It made me feel like Ruth Ware was doubting my ability to put the pieces together. So like there's a point in Aaron's narration where we are told that Liz was just like remorseless and felt no guilt and that she was just like at this point killing to kill and we could have come to that conclusion on our own. I we I did not need Aaron to tell me that and that was just a bit of an annoyance on my end. But overall I do think it was handled incredibly well. And I did enjoy this book. I'm going to read Ruth Ware's next book. Um 
I'll give her a go. I do think I will hopefully enjoy the next one. I have no idea what it's about. I don't even know if it's been announced yet. I would say, fingers crossed, I like the next Literally Dead Book Club pick. But that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, and I've already read and loved that one. So, at least we have that going for us. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!